And there are some whom these pangs are so bad, the hadith describes a bad person, the evil person. When the soul is taken out of the body, it is like a rope full of thorns and nails being pulled out of the throat. How it would feel? Just picture it for a moment. And that rope is being pulled and tugged and continue and that is the feeling of the pangs of death of an evil person. Whereas a good person who has been doing good deeds, fulfilling their salah, helping others, abstaining from sin, constantly repenting to Allah, Allah says for that person, their pang of death will be similar to a hair being taken out of the throat. Look at the difference here. One is a hair being taken out. And the other one is a rope with nails and with thorns and so on being tugged out of the throat with this person suffocating. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the easy one. Ya Allah, the day you take us away, make it easy for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how easy it is when a person dies in their sleep. If someone dies in their sleep, the, the pangs are very minimal. That is also a gift of Allah, to die in your sleep. It's a gift. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when a person is sleeping, the soul is less connected to the body than when they are awake. Do you know sleep cannot be explained by anybody? Nobody in this dunya can explain to you what the details of sleep and how you dream and so on. Nobody, never, they can't. There is no machine to gauge your dream. Imagine if there was a mirror they had to put in front of your head and they would be able to see what you are dreaming. People would create movie houses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. But it's the qudra of Allah. Nobody can see what you are dreaming. No one can explain. Otherwise, if people could, then the scientists would tell you, have this tablet, you have a dream of green uh, forest and so on. Have this tablet, you dream of motor vehicles. Have that tablet, you will dream of big houses and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding of His greatness. Allah says, I know what you don't know. The same applies death. Nobody can explain to you where we were five years before we were born. Ask yourself, where was I five years before I was born? Can anyone explain? Can any machine take you back and tell you this is where you were? What about one year after you die? Where are you? Can anyone explain? Nobody. We, we have to take revelation in order to explain to us where we will be. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us. I was speaking about the pangs of death. When we are sleeping, the, the soul and the body are connected, but not in the same way that they are connected whilst we are awake. And Allah says, if your death is written in your sleep, I don't send your soul back into the body, I take it away. And if your death is not written whilst you are asleep, Allah says, as you wake up or you are awakened, I send that soul back into your body, it plugs in once again properly. What is the soul and how it operates? No doctor can inform you, not the rocket scientist can tell you, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a small bit of knowledge. Very small bit. So this is Allah. Allahu yatawaffal anfusa hina mawtiha wallati lam tamut fi manamiha Allah says Allah causes the extraction of the soul when a person dies and he causes the extraction of a soul to a different level when a person is sleeping فَيُمْسِكُ الَّتِي قَضَى عَلَيْهَا الْمَوْتَ وَيُرْسِلُ الْأُخْرَى إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى Allah says, so when a person is sleeping, we hold the soul. If death is written, we keep it. And if it is not, we send it back for a period of time. That is in the Qur'an. And I've just read for you the verse. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how the person who is good will receive the angels. 
when the person is good and is passing away they will see good angels dressed in white clothing or dressed in beautiful clothing come to them they will be happy you find people smiling as they are dying it happens this is because when you lead a good life you die a good death the angels who come to get your soul they will come with such goodness and they will remove the soul with such precision and with so much ease الذين تتوفاهم الملائكة طيبين يقولون سلام عليكم ادخلوا الجنة الله أكبر The angels who come to the good they will greet them with سلام عليكم as they take the soul and they will inform them that for you is Jannah you are going to paradise, mashallah. What about the opposite? May Allah protect us from that. Oh, Allahu Akbar. The descriptions are many in the Quran. Allah says, the angels of death who come to the evil people, they will come like monsters. And this person will be frightened, not knowing where to go, how to run, where to run. It is too late. And they will extract with so much pain, the soul from this person, it is described in a very, very vivid manner. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. It is reported that sometimes people will also begin to beat themselves and hit their, their bodies and so on as they are dying and stamping and they won't know and they are kicking like the kicking of a dying animal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks also about how we will be returned to the soil. This is very important for us to know. مِنْهَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَى Allah says, we created you from soil. We will return you into the soil and we will resurrect you back into the soil. The system of burial that Islam has is the best. Nobody can compete with it. It is the cheapest, most effective, most hygienic, most humane, and the most workable on the globe. Others, subhanallah, what they do, they spend lots of money preparing the body with the best watch and the big best suit and the best shoes and they buy a coffin made of you know, very expensive wood and they buy locks and so on, locking in order to ensure that when adab comes, it remains. Allah protect us. So they lock it properly and they will create a ceremony, keep it for so long. We are taught that no, the body, we are created from soil. To honor man, don't wait until his body releases a stench, a smell. No, bury him as soon as possible. There is no time limit or time frame in Islam that says one hour or two hours but as soon as possible sometimes as soon as possible is two hours sometimes it is one day depending on what as soon as possible is for that particular janaza or that particular deceased person and we are meant to return them into the soil as soon as we can as honor and respect we wash them nicely as though we are having a bath ourselves, the same way we wash the dead. That is in a sentence. Obviously there are details, but that is in a sentence. The idea, we use soap as well. We will wash the body, clean the body nicely. We wrap it into white pieces of cloth, put it into the, so into the soil, and we have a gap. A gap for what? For the oxygen. Yes, the angels of death are going to come and question and so on. That is all part of our belief. The angels of death will come and question, Who is your Rabb? What is your Deen? Who is this man, Muhammad? Or who is your Nabi? And you will have to answer. You will only be able to answer through practice, through fulfilling. You might memorize the answers here, but if you did not follow, you won't know everything, because you are not going to use this same tongue to answer. 
It is Allah's qudra that will make you answer in a way that Allah knows. Allah is the only one who knows exactly how that is going to happen. We believe whatever we are taught. So the method of burial, we return to the soil. Why do we not cremate? It's a question some people ask. Why don't you cremate? I have a few discrepancies, a few questions. Firstly, the body cannot feel after death unless Allah wants it to feel. The body or a person cannot hear after death unless Allah wants the person to hear. When you go and say, Assalamu alaikum ahlad diyari min al mu'mineen, Allah wants them to hear, they will hear it. But the function of the ears that they had during their life is over. A dead person, when Allah wants them to see, they will see. But the functions of the eyes that they had whilst they were alive are over. How they see, only Allah knows. How they hear, only Allah knows. So we need to understand it is possible. It is possible for Allah to make someone feel the burning after death in the form of cremation. But maybe they can't tell you that I'm screaming, stop burning me, I can feel this fire. Is there a possibility? The answer is yes, there is a probability. Maybe Allah's qudra, Allah's power, He can make someone feel. Why take that risk? Number one. Number two. When we burn a human being, the person becomes ash. And ash does not mix with the soil. It will always remain ash. Because it has burned at a higher temperature with a higher pressure. So ash will not mix with the soil. But if you put a person into a grave and leave some room for some oxygen, and then you close it after some time, it will disintegrate into the soil completely. Subhanallah. Completely. So if someone is cremated, they are not going to be returned to the soil. But if someone is not cremated and they are buried, they will be soon returned to the soil. And we won't put a wooden box unless the condition of the soil requires us to put something more firm. Like there are certain places in the UK and so on where they are required to put something more firm. Religiously, we will only put the shroud, the kafan. It will go in. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goodness. We ask Him to make it easy for us. It is a very great sunnah to go out to attend janazah, whether you know the man or not, or the woman or not. For the men folk, it is a very big sunnah to go out and attend salatul janazah. The hadith says, whoever goes to fulfill or that prayer of janazah for, for someone, they will have the reward of one qirat. One qirat is a mountain, one big mountain, full of what? Something more valuable than gold. Why? Why is there such a big reward? How many janazas have we attended? I think many, many. The whole idea is for us to imagine that it is myself in that casket. That is the idea. That is when I will benefit correctly. When we attend janazah, don't just attend and say, I'm making dua for this man and that's it. And I've made dua and now I'm going. You will have a complete reward when you imagine that you yourself are in there. You will come back a totally changed person. One mountain of reward to fulfill salah. Another mountain of reward to go to the graveside and to help to bury or even to stand around. Why? Because again, put yourself in the grave. Imagine it is you and they are going to bury you like I started the talk. If you think every time you visit the graveyard to bury someone that it is you who went, your life will change. You will not be able to commit a sin. You won't. That is why death is a gift of Allah. Because it reminds us that we are going, we don't have room to sin. 
Allah will grant us the goodness in the akhirah, in the life after death. Imagine if death was not there. If death was not there, one wonders how people would go about on this earth and what, what they would do. There would be no accountability, nothing. Besides to the policemen here and there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. And that is true. You know, I was traveling in one country, in South Africa in fact. And the speed traps that they have, you know, big people. When I say big people, I mean wealthy people. They see 60. From 120 they break. They will not cross that camera flash strip at 61, no, but at 59 or 60. And I thought to myself, I said, you know, imagine everybody comes to a standstill and everybody breaks. Just sit and watch. You see red lights of brake lights. You know, if you are at the back, you witness all the brake lights. Everybody is breaking when you come to the speed trap. They are worried because the fine is very heavy. Fine is very heavy. I think 2,000 rands, 3,000 rands in South Africa. And I was thinking to myself, Subhanallah, we have taqwa. Taqwa, I want to use the word taqwa. Of a speed trap, but we don't have taqwa of Allah. We are so conscious if we fear Allah, half of what we fear the speed trap, the problem is solved. I don't know if you are understanding the example I'm giving here. Sometimes we fear worldly things, one, two thousand rands. What about Allah? We are crossing His limit. This is a speed limit. Allah also has limits. But we cross His limits at 240 kilometers. No problem. And with the limit of the dunya, we want to be at 59 when it is at 60. Why? We are worried about one day imprisonment or 2,000, 5,000 rupee, maybe 20,000, 30,000, 100,000 chalo, 1 million rupee, no problem. I'm not saying drive fast, but I'm saying think. We are ready to do this for this. We are not ready to do that for that when it is more important. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of another very, very good example. Do you know, every time the reign of mercy is mentioned in the Quran, immediately after that Allah says, that is how I will resurrect you. This is something we need to learn from the Quran. Every time Allah speaks of rain, and He says it lands on, or the rain comes, falls down onto the land that is dry, and then don't you see that the dry dead land after the rain falls on it becomes green? Don't you see that? That is the question Allah asks. Allah says, well, that is how we will resurrect you after you have died and decomposed into the soil. That is how we will resurrect you. There are many verses where Allah speaks about the rain. And then He says, every time He says, that is how we are going to resurrect you. That is how we will be taking the dead people out in order for you to be reminded. That is how we will be resurrecting you every time Allah says that. Now there is a hadith reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu an. He says that when the trumpet will be blown, there will fall rain. There will be the falling of certain type of rain. Now before I speak of the type of rain, let me inform you or remind you of something else. In this world, we have one type of rain. Generally, which means H2O comes from the heavens. Am I right? It comes from the clouds. Normally, it's in the form of H2O, unless you are living in one of the developed countries like Britain, where they have acid rain because of whatever they are emitting and so on. But generally you have rain. And the fruit that we have grow. The different fruits grow. Every fruit has a different seed. So the apple seed you plant here, next to it you plant the banana seed, next to it you plant for example the strawberry plant, you will find a plant of strawberry here, you will find an apple tree here, and a banana tree here. You will find it, but the rain was one, the seed was different. 
That is Allah's power. On the day of Qiyamah or after Qiyamah, or sh- no, sorry, before Qiyamah, after the world comes to an end, when the trumpet is blown, there will be a different type of rain. The hadith says, it will be thick white rain, similar to the semen of man. Kamaniyir rijal. Thick white rain will fall. For a period of 40 days or 40 months or 40 years, it just says for a period of 40, but it doesn't explain whether it is days or whatever, according to us, for a period of time. And people will grow like plants grow onto the mahshar. Did we know that? The Quran says that. People will grow. People will grow. And what will be the seed? It is known as ajbud dhanab. Ajbud dhanab means the bottom most part of your spine. It is a small conical like bone which does not decompose generally when the body is decomposed completely. That remains or a small portion of it remains. But even if someone burns it and crushes it, no problem. Allah says we will gather it together. No problem. We will bring it together. So people will grow. This is why Allah says, whenever you see the rain, think of life after death. You will also grow in a similar way. And we will grow until we are 18 meters tall. Each one is 60 feet. Depending on the size of those feet, we are saying on average 18 meters. But very tall, very, very tall. And all those who have passed away post puberty will be resurrected with a body of the age of 33. With a body of the age of 33. So tall, big, huge, mashallah. Age of 33 stops growing. Now you answer Allah. Ma minkum min ahadin illa sayukallimuhu rabbuhu. Laysa baynahu wa baynahu turjuman. Every single one of you is going to speak directly to your Creator without any intermediary between, with no barrier and with no translator, nothing. You will talk to Allah and you will answer to Him. You won't see Him yet, not yet, no. But you will talk to Him and answer to Him. To see Allah, you need to go to paradise first. It is a gift for those who have believed and done good deeds. So this is also part of what Allah speaks about in the Quran, death. And this is why it is important for us to make dua. The Quran teaches us to pray to Allah. Ya Allah, give us a good death. Ya Allah, the day you take us away, take us away in a condition that you are pleased with us. Grant us ease when you take us away. It is important for us to make dua for ourselves and our progeny and our offspring. And it is important for us to constantly mention death. Akthiru. The hadith says, increase the remembrance of that which destroys all desires. You know, you desire to do this and to do that and to do that. Then you say, but I'm not well. Prepare for it. It is also important to write your will. Important preparation for death is to write your will. Let people know how much you owe others and what others owe you and where things are and what to do and what not to do and so on. And it is prohibited to write a will according to our own fancies. We need to learn what the Quran says and what Allah says about drawing up a will. There is a specific way of doing it. Let us learn it. Like I said, we are Muslims. We have studied many, many books. We have read novels, but some of us have not read the Quran yet. We don't know what the Quran says. Why? It is about time we open the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It leads us to the hadith. The Quran tells us about the importance of the hadith. If we understand the Arabic language and understand the message of the Quran, the Quran leads us to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the explanation of the Quran derived from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about 
how important it is also to visit the graveyards for the men. For the men, it is extremely important. Alhaakum uttakathur hatta zurtumul maqabir. Oh, amassing wealth has kept you occupied and it has led you astray. It has kept you preoccupied, amassing wealth. Everyone is trying to earn, earn. Today, if we have a man standing at that door and we know that the first person to touch his hand, for example, will be given one million rupees. I think everybody will try to rush there. They will leave the people who are, you know, in the front. They will leave everybody aside and they will say, let me go. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us this understanding. When we visit the graveyard, it is important for us to know that there was a time when it was prohibited to visit graveyards. The hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kuntu nahaytukum an ziyarati al-quburi ala fazuruha fa innaha tudhakkirukum al-akhirah. I used to prohibit you from visiting the graveyards. Why? Because people used to worship the graveyards and worship the graves. So that is why it was prohibited initially. So the Prophet ﷺ says, I used to prohibit you from visiting the graveyards. But now you may visit. For definitely it should remind you of the Akhirah. So that is the purpose of visiting the graveyard. To remind us to say, I am also going there. Whenever we go to the graveyard, it's important that we realize this and we understand it. There are many other aspects of death that we can speak about. But I'd like to end with one very, very important aspect. Allah is the creator and He has everything besides Him is the created creation. Allah the creator, everything besides Him, creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not die. And He does not die. He is everlasting. Inna Allah hayyun la yamut. Allah is alive. He will never die. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Furqan, وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتُ وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِهِ وَكَفَى بِهِ بِذُنُوبِ عِبَادِهِ بَصِيرًا Lay your trust in the one who is all alive. He does not die. The one who is all watchful over the deeds of all his creation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who lay our trust in him. This evening we've spoken on this topic of death. I hope it has benefited yourselves and myself. The bare minimum it should do for every one of us is to help us to prepare for the day we are going. And to help us realize that death, as much as we should be fearing it, we should also be looking forward to it if we do good deeds. Because a person who does good deeds, they then wish to meet Allah. كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ أَجَلَ اللَّهِ لَآتِ Whoever is wishing to meet Allah, whoever wants to meet Allah, Allah says, don't worry, the prescribed time is very near. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a meeting with Him. Ya Allah, grant us the goodness of meeting you, Ya Allah. اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا الله يا الله you are the creator you made us يا الله you created absolutely everything you are omnipotent يا الله يا الله you are the creator nourisher cherisher sustainer provider you are in absolute control of every single aspect of our existence يا الله we worship you, Ya Allah. We put our head on the ground for you, Ya Allah. We bow for you. We prostrate for you. We read our salah for you, Ya Allah. We adore you, Ya Allah. We worship you, Ya Allah. We are so weak and helpless. Forgive us, Ya Allah. Grant us forgiveness, Ya Allah. Make us the best of people, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us to say good words from our tongues. 
Protect our tongues from bad words. Ya Allah. Make us steadfast in our salah. Make us dress appropriately, Ya Allah. Help us to come closer to you as the days pass, Ya Allah. Protect us from turning away. Ya Allah, protect us from shaitan, the devil. Ya Allah, keep him far away from us and keep us far away from him, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant our parents paradise, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, those of us whose parents are alive, Ya Allah, make us from those who can serve them. Those of us whose parents have passed away, forgive our parents, Ya Allah. Grant them the loftiest ranks of paradise. Ya Allah, make us happy people, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us contentment and happiness and bliss. Protect us from ill health and bad health, Ya Allah. Give us good health, Ya Allah. You are the owner of health. Ya Allah, grant us cure from the sicknesses we have. Those sicknesses we know about and those we don't know about, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make our offspring champions of this deen, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path and keep us on the straight path. Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path and keep us on the straight path. Ya Allah, make us an asset to our family members, to our communities and to our country at large, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us to be kind to the Muslims and to the non-Muslims, Ya Allah. Help us to be helpful to one and all. Help us portray the good image of Islam to the entire globe, Ya Allah. Use us to serve this deen, Ya Allah. Use us to promote Islam, Ya Allah. Help us so that we can leave our bad habits, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we promise you that we will not sin, Ya Allah, knowingly. Ya Allah, wherever we have sinned and erred, forgive us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we promise to turn, Ya Allah, today, Ya Allah. Here and now, we have turned to you, Ya Allah. We leave our bad ways and habits. We promise to dress appropriately, Ya Allah. We promise to abstain from listening to music that is detrimental to our ears, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we promise to abstain from all that which is bad. Ya Allah, we promise to abstain from all bad habits, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us to abstain from all bad habits, Ya Allah. Those who are drinking, help them to abstain from drinking alcohol, Ya Allah. Those on drugs, help them, Ya Allah, to leave that filthy habit, Ya Allah, which is the scourge of the age, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, protect our children from it. Ya Allah, those who are involved in alcohol, Ya Allah, in all forms of intoxicants, in drugs, Ya Allah, in gambling, in adultery, Ya Allah, in all forms of sinning, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, keep us away from all that, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive those who have been engaged in it. Ya Allah, keep them away from it, Ya Allah. Safeguard their children and their offspring, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make our homes happy homes, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us every form of goodness, Ya Allah. Accept this gathering of ours, Ya Allah. Guide those who are astray, Ya Allah. Safeguard our women, Ya Allah. Safeguard our men folk, Ya Allah. Help us to learn the Quran, Ya Allah. The message of the Quran, Ya Allah. Help us to learn the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Help us to adopt it, put it into practice and teach it to others, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us dedicate some time to, to learn this religion, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, to put it into practice. Ya Allah, we are Muslimin, we are so fortunate, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we are guilty of not doing enough, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us, Ya Allah. Guide us, Ya Allah. Guide us to the straight path, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, there are people on the globe at this moment who are suffering, Ya Allah. Homeless people, Ya Allah. Suffering, those who are suffering, who are suffering due to flooding, due to wars, Ya Allah, due to disease, due to plague, Ya Allah. You have mercy on them, Ya Allah. You have mercy on all of them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, have mercy on all of us as well, Ya Allah. The day you take us away, take us away smiling, Ya Allah. Take us away with the shahada on our tongues, Ya Allah. We have heard from the messenger that whoever passes away with the shahada, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, on their tongues, they will enter paradise without reckoning. Ya Allah, make us from amongst them. Ya Allah, make us from amongst them. Ya Allah, help us. Help us to be good to our wives and our husbands, Ya Allah. Our children, our parents, our uncles, Ya Allah. Help us solve problems, Ya Allah. Don't make us create problems, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make us the best of people, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us a light that we can walk with to see the path, Ya Allah. Help us to distinguish between right and wrong, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, keep us away from bad company and bad friends, Ya Allah. Help us to give up the bad friends that we have, Ya Allah. And help us to associate with those who are good people, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you all the goodness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has asked you. And we seek protection from all the evil that he has sought protection from. Anta al-musta'an alayka al-balaq. Wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.